Well, everything is absolutely well and truly covered with frost this morning. It's cold. Um, I, you know, and, and of course the lights are going as well. The sun's not even up yet. It's what? Oh, my watch is not working properly. Uh, if it's not one thing, it's another. I think my, this watch needs a new battery. But it's, uh, it's I, I don't know exactly what the time is. It's a little after seven. Ten past seven, maybe, something like that. And the sun is not up yet. I actually brought the transmitter mitt today. Whether it's going to do me much good, I don't know. But, uh, oh, it's cold. I, th I was going to have, try and have a tiger moth today. I bought all of my, all of my tiger moths. This is the little... Uh, the little hobby people one. They don't know about this whole business at all. One thing about this guy is he's only three channels, so you're not uh, the pro the process of controlling him is not all that complex. But um, And the whole idea of a transmitter mitt is not something I'm all that com uh, comfortable with, but... Uh, you know, the idea is you try and keep yourself and the transmitter, well, mainly your own hands. I don't think the cold really stops the transmitter working, but it, it certainly can freeze up your hands. There is a heater you can put in this as well. I did not resort to trying to put the heater into it today. It's a little heating element that you put in with a... Uh, powered by a two-cell LiPo. And it uh, supposedly can keep the thing somewhat warm. Or indeed, I gather, very warm if you're not careful. You can actually burn yourself. You've got to be... I haven't, I haven't tried it. I have it, I bought it when I bought the transmitter mitt, but I have not used it. So, I don't know. This is the little hobby people, tiger moth. Flying with a, a big uh, 200 milliamp, well, big, relatively big for him, 200 milliamp hour Yashin battery. He came with a 35 milliamp hour battery, but... Uh, that sort of got to the point where it was hardly holding enough charge to keep him airborne for a minute or two. So I managed to find something else that I could fit on and that would work, and I was a bit surprised that he would even, uh, that he flew okay with this really, because it's a lot heavier than his original battery, but so long as you mount it in such a way which you can do, I've just got it attached with a rubber band, to, uh, so I can slide it backwards and forwards, and I keep the um, center of gravity in the same position that it always was, which is basically on the back strut of the top wing. And, uh, and he flies fine. As much as he ever did. I mean, he never had much power. I mean, he's, he's a very tiny, tiny little thing with a couple of magnetic actuators for powering the tail and, uh, you know, the elevator and the rudder and um, a little tiny, tiny motor. Very, uh, very small. And, uh, and low power, but uh, a fun and a uh, nice looking little plane. They call him a backyard on the box. They describe him as a backyard flyer, and I guess you could fly him in your backyard. You certainly, if you're flying him outdoors, you certainly want to be flying him when there's pretty much no wind, because of course he is very, very light and very, very low power, so he would not be able to cope. We cannot cope with any significant wind. You'll just get blown away if you try and fly him when there's any sort of significant wind. And of course you could fly him indoors, although as a matter of fact, I don't think I ever have flown him indoors. In fact, oddly enough. Oh, maybe once. Maybe I did have him. Maybe once I had him out to the community centre. There, what I would be worried about would be other people's planes chewing him up. It's a bit of a crowded airspace when you fly in the indoor days at the community centre. Anyway, we're not going to go into protracted businesses today. Whoops. 
he didn't, uh, that, he'll fly virtually forever on this battery, not forever, but for longer than I've ever uh, had the patience to fly him on this battery. The original battery, even when it was new, he only flew, that's just the magnetic actuator buzzing. Um, he only ever, f oh, do stop it. That's yeah, because it's, tra I've got one hand in the transmitter mitt and I'm trying to, thank you. I'm trying to neutralize things so these tra his magnetic actuators don't buzz. But it's hard to do when everything's inside the transmitter mitt. This is the problem with transmitter mitts. Hobby people, tiger moths. Well, we're still battling with the frost here. Next moth is the GWS Pico Tiger Moth, three channel. Pico Tiger Moth. Uh, I did not build this one. I bought it ready-made with a already assembled and ready to go. It was still with the original uh, GWS motor and everything in it. Um, and with an FM uh, receiver, I changed it to a... a uh, Spectrum. Let's see. Oh, I'll take the throttle cut off. It help. See if we can actually get him to run over the grass here, the the very frosty grass. Yes. Wasn't sure what effect the thrust would have and things. Probably doesn't do much for the power of the battery and everything. He is also. In many ways, other than being bigger, he isn't so dissimilar to the little hobby people moth in the sense that um, he's just three channel and kind of without a lot of power. So he isn't going to do a great deal either. But again, he looks nice. I've always liked the look of him. Oh, okay. I like pretty much any moth that will fly. Mind looking at models of moths that don't fly, but time remaining five minutes. Turn him a little more quickly there. Try and avoid him going behind me. A good deal, a lot bigger than the Pico Tiger moth, but. Not a lot more ability to handle wind. You can probably handle a tiny bit of wind, but you wouldn't want to handle much wind because he's very light, again, very low powered. He's just sort of drifting around, so. Uh, I would not want to fly him with any sort of significant amount of wind about, but on a, and I wouldn't want, well, yeah, you could fly him indoors, I suppose. I haven't flown this one indoors. But on a nice, still morning, he's, it's nice to see him flying around the field. Time remaining, four minutes. I'm actually flying him with the LiPo that came with him when I bought him. And you could probably fit something else on, but uh, this one fits rather well. He would have originally uh, been designed to fly with, um, uh, I guess, a NIMH battery because the kit dates back to before LiPos were current. Oh, well, I don't know. This is just an exercise, I guess, in battling the weather a bit and having the moths outdoors for one last time this year, pretty much, probably. Well, I mean, not I say last time. I mean, there may be some uh, op opportunity to fly quite pleasantly in the middle of the day still, uh, but the, the mornings you're not going to... You're not going to see much uh, weather in the mornings. It's much better than this, I don't think, now. During the day, you, you get in the middle of the day, you can still get some quite, uh, quite um, summery. Well, maybe summery is pushing it, but like quite clement weather in the middle of the day. But there we go.
There you go, the GWS Pico Tiger Moss. Next moss on this frosty morning, the GWS 3D Moss, as they call it. This one has ailerons, as well as its uh, rudder and elevator. This one I built from a kit. This one I bought the kit uh, from the Spitfire Emporium, actually, in Kitchener, and built uh, myself. Uh, it does have the... Uh, it has the... Oh, the sun's up now. We've got to watch we don't blind ourselves. Uh, it has the... Uh, the the, uh, the original GWS brushed power system in it, but I am powering it with a, a LiPo, a two-cell LiPo. <sighs> Getting a little trickier. This guy's not hard, hard to fly, but he's, you know, he's not three-channel. He's a little uh, more uh, famous last week. I can't even get him to move. He's sort of stuck in the... He's stuck in the frost. Yeah, go on, say. I mean, I know he, he, again, he seems like critically underpowered, I have to say. What the heck? He also doesn't seem to want to turn left at all. I don't know what the heck's the matter with him. There's something wrong. I cannot get him to turn left at all, which is bizarre. I don't know what the hell's the matter with him. Seems to fly okay so long as I turn right, but... Uh, oh, there, he's turning left now. I don't, no, not really. No, no, something's distinctly wrong with him. I cannot get him to turn left. I do not know what the problem is. I do not know what the problem is. Maybe his rudder stuck, stuck or something. Yeah, he just won't fly properly. I don't know. Is it, is it going now? Uh, maybe I've got it going now, but... I, something was stuck. I mean, this is the problem. Well, I did build this. <laughs> so I've got no one to blame but myself. It's just, they're just little foam surfaces and... It's not deeply robust, and it's been sitting in my living room for a while. It seems to be working now, but I, I just couldn't get it to turn left at all at first. I think the rudder was... It seemed like the ailerons were working. I think the rudder was kind of stuck or something. Although I did uh, waggle it before I took off, and it appeared to be waggling. Well, I'm sure this cold doesn't help. I mean, it really is pretty cold. I've certainly never flown this guy. And it still really isn't very keen on turning left. <laughs> you can pull force it, but it's not terribly keen. And I'm kind of surprised how underpowered this is, because this is the power system that came with it. Hmm, well, maybe it's something to, you know... No, I don't think so. I'm trying to think, you know, I was, I was thinking maybe the LiPo I'm giving isn't supplying it with as much power as a, as a NIMH would, but I think it is actually pretty much. I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't want to try and just three-cell LiPo with it. I'm not sure. I can't remember now what they specified for the NIMH that you were supposed to power it with. Anyway. Time remaining, five minutes. You can fly it like this, but not, other than problems controlling it, not too excitingly. Yeah, it really is balking at turning left today. I really don't know quite what's with that. Yeah, see, ah, uh, see, I think the rudder's sticking. See, because he's flying, he's yawing left, but he's, oh, God. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's definitely something dicky, as it were, about that rudder. He's... Oh, let's land him. There you go. I don't know. 
<laughs> there was definitely something off. Is it just trim? I don't know. Anyway. Uh, I don't know. It seemed like the rudder was sticking. Seems to be operating okay now, but it certainly seemed like the rudder was sticking some of the time in the air. And it probably is out of trim a little bit to the right. GWS 3D Moth. Okay, last of the moths. The Dynam Tiger Moth in its current form as I have it. Um, we shall see. I'm trying to juggle this blasted whatnot now. Let's see. We got a I got an, I do have an onboard camera on this one, so I want to, if I can persuade it to work, but of course, in all this f frost, persuading everything, anything to work is tricky. Yes, I believe that's recording okay now. We'll see how everything works. I don't know. I got throttle cut on, yes. Sun's up. A few degrees above the horizon, but it doesn't manage to really move any of the frost yet. Everything's still very much covered with frost. Some mist down there, but no mist right round here. Let us hope that all is working okay. Ah, he's got uh, wheels off a park zone sport cub on him because his own wheels, I had problems with him. And I also change the angle of them to make them run a bit, uh, to be a bit further forward to give him be better balance on the grass. <sighs> because he tended to nose over all the time otherwise. It is cold and trying, it's cold, it's clear and windless but cold. Trying to compete with this cold is a little tough. Where are we going here? Whoa. This guy, of course, is much more of a full size plane. And he's had his problems, like about the second time I flew him, I crashed him, crashed him badly because somebody distracted me and then I, well, it's my excuse, no, but they did. Somebody asked me to move just as I was landing him, which was a bit problematical. And it put me right off and, and there was some wind as well. And he got broken into like three, but there's a bit of wind now, actually, oddly enough, I don't feel any at ground level, but since he's crabbing, he's flying sideways. There is obviously some wind up there, clearly, because he is not flying in the direction he's pointing at all. So there's obviously wind up there, although I can't feel a, I can't feel a breath of wind at ground level. But there's clearly some wind up there. Let's just try and do a gentle loop. I don't want to do too much with him, really. I mean, you know, I'm sure he's he well. <laughs> He's quite capable of it the way Dynam make him probably, but you know, as I say, this one got crashed. The fuselage broke into three pieces uh, and the wings were damaged somewhat and all of the state guy wires came off, all of the wires they supplied. So I've just got thread on now, which I don't think is really doing anything structurally. So I don't think he's, uh, you know... He's not such a strong plane now, I wouldn't want to push him too much. But I thought, you know, this this will be his last outing this year, I imagine. Because this is going to be, well, unless I go out in the middle of the day, if there's a nice, if there's a nice warm day, I might go out in the middle of the day. But m m in terms of trying to get out in the early mornings, I mean, this is pretty much it, you know. It's, it's, uh, there's, you know, there's, there's very little light. And there's, 
but there's very little light and uh, and it's getting darn cold. And I don't find it easy to deal with all the cold and everything. I bought this transmitter mitt last year actually thinking that maybe I'd fly in the winter and I bought the heater to go with it. But I never really did. It's just too much like hard work. There's other things you can do in the winter that aren't such blithering hard work. Let's try and not hit ourselves in the head as we land. There you go. The uh, the Dynam Tiger Moth. I've got him running on a three cell. He's really supposed to run on a four cell, but uh, uh, I don't know. I have to say, you know, I'm just going to turn this guy off. Turn the onboard camera off. Everything's still totally covered with frost. October in Canada. There you go. The Dynam Tiger Moth.